During World War II, Germany did not have a strategic bomber force, but that does not mean Germany did not have strategic bombers. Throughout the entire war, the German military had several large aircraft, such as the Mi-264 bomber and the Boulevard 222 Viking large seaplane. These aircraft were not mass-produced or only served in small quantities for various reasons. Today, we will introduce another large aircraft with a similar fate, the Ju-290. This aircraft was designed in various models, including a large transport plane, a long-range bomber, a maritime patrol aircraft, and even a private armored aircraft for the leader. The Ju-290 was developed based on the German Ju-90 passenger plane, which has a complex history. The Ju-90 itself was developed from the Ju-89. The Ju-89 was a model that lost in the competition for long-range strategic bombers in the early 1930s, Germany later abandoned strategic bombers. Afterwards, Lufthansa took over the Ju-89 and developed it into a commercial passenger plane, indicating that the Ju-290 had the lineage of a bomber from its roots. The Ju-90 was a fully metal, low-wing, four-engine aircraft with a slight upward angle on the wings, a slightly backward-swept leading edge, a straight trailing edge, and a twin vertical tail, which was common for large German aircraft. The Ju-290 shared most of its structure with the Ju-89 and could transport about 40 passengers. With this technological inheritance, the development of the Ju-290 went smoothly. Its appearance was related to the weak long-range bombing capability of the German military in the early stages of World War II, especially the poor performance of the German Air Force's tactical bombers during the bombing of Britain. The first prototype of the Ju-290 V-1 made its maiden flight on July 16, 1942. The main changes were made to the fuselage and power system. The fuselage was lengthened to provide a larger cargo space, and a hydraulic cargo ramp was installed at the rear for loading and unloading. Due to the straight body and large ground clearance, the ramp was actually quite steep and not very convenient to use. The wingspan was increased, and the four engines were replaced with more powerful Daimler-Benz DB600C liquid-cooled engines, each with a power of 1100 horsepower. Due to the urgent frontline situation, after the completion of testing, the Ju-290 V-1 served as the basis for the production of eight unarmed transport aircraft, Ju-290A-1. Some of these aircraft were quickly deployed to the front lines for transport missions. This transport aircraft was very practical for the German military at that time. It had a cruising speed of about 360 km per hour, with the replacement of BMW 801D engines, a maximum range of over 6,000 km, and a maximum takeoff weight of about 41 tons. It was very suitable for long-distance transport missions. Its long range also made it suitable for long-range patrol missions. The Navy hoped to obtain such an aircraft to support submarine operations at sea, and this became the Ju-290 A-2. The A-2 was a modification of the A-1, and three A-1 aircraft on the assembly line underwent modifications. In addition to installing auxiliary fuel tanks, the aircraft were equipped with search radar and a tail gun turret. The turret was equipped with a 20mm machine gun, and the search radar could detect maritime targets within a radius of 80 km at an altitude of 500 meters and within a radius of 100 km at an altitude of 1,000 meters. The Ju-290 A-2 could utilize its long range to conduct long-range and wide-ranging searches in the Atlantic Ocean and, after determining the target's location, contact nearby submarines via radio to initiate hunting. The A-3 can be seen as an enhanced version of the A-2. It added navigation equipment and installed two hydraulically powered dorsal gun turrets. There was also a fixed turret under the nose. Although these additional weapons increased the aircraft's load, its self-defense firepower was stronger. The A3 and A2 did not have major changes to the fuselage, so they could quickly be converted back into transport aircraft. The A4 was a slightly modified version of the A3. The A5 and A7 were two interesting models. They were long-range reconnaissance slash attack aircraft. Although they did not have traditional bomb bays, there were plans to install radio-guided systems on the aircraft and carry HS-293 anti-ship missiles and Fritz X heavy-guided bombs. The A-8 and Ju-290B were envisioned as strategic bombers, but they were never completed. The A-6 was a 50-seat passenger aircraft, and only one prototype was built. 
The A-9 was a long-range transport aircraft designed to establish direct contact with allies on the other side of the Eurasian continent during World War II. In order to fly across this vast continent, the aircraft underwent modifications to increase fuel capacity. The final plan was to land in a certain area in northeastern China. However, for various reasons, the aircraft never completed this astonishing long-distance flight. The leader was very interested in the Ju-290 as well. In 1943, he requested the Air Force Marshal to provide him with a private aircraft. Perhaps due to the scarcity of aircraft, it was not until the end of the following year that one aircraft was allocated for modification. The front section of the fuselage was equipped with an armored cockpit, with 12mm thick armor plates and 50mm thick bulletproof glass windows, as well as necessary escape equipment. This unique version of the Air Force One for the leader was destroyed in a bombing at Munich Airport in March 1945 and did not fulfill its intended role. All three branches of the military, the Navy, Army, and Air Force, competed for this useful large aircraft. Although the Army did not have the qualifications to own aircraft, they hoped to receive support from the Air Force in many operations. During the Battle of Stalingrad, they urgently needed this aircraft for personnel and cargo transportation. One aircraft even crashed on the front lines. The Navy hoped to use all Ju-290 aircraft for maritime patrol missions. This proposal was naturally rejected by the Air Force. However, the Air Force also faced difficulties. As the war progressed, production resources became extremely scarce, and the Air Force had to halt production of the Ju-290 and concentrate all its efforts on producing fighter aircraft. The story of the Ju-290 did not end after World War II. In addition to the aircraft captured by the Allied forces for testing, one aircraft was detained by Spain during the war and continued to be used after the war. Czechoslovakia produced a 48-seat high-altitude long-range passenger aircraft using spare parts from the Ju-290B-1 bomber version. Throughout the entire period of World War II, the Ju-290 series of aircraft was undoubtedly an excellent model. It could fulfill a series of tasks such as strategic bombing, long-range reconnaissance, and transport. However, such an aircraft did not receive large-scale deployment, which was related to the realities of Germany's industrial capacity and resource scarcity at that time. 